Flowhow, sales of Moldex 3D and consultancy, specialists in injection molding simulations. Hello, Matt Jesperson from Flowhow. Um, in this case, in this uh, video, I will show you how to use sequential filling by controlling the valve gate in a hot runner system. Um, I'll use uh, Molex 3D for the simulation and it's uh, release 15 service pack 2. I've imported a very simple part and then um, I'll import uh, some lines as runners. I could also use pin gates and but in this case I'll use some lines. It's a hot runner import, yes. And I'll mark these, make them instead of two millimeters, make them six millimeters. And I'll take this one. Instead of a hot runner, we call it a hot runner gate. And six millimeters here. And then we have to uh, um, define a number for it. You can go in here and define a number. And then afterwards you can pick the number. I'll call this valve gate one. I'll hit this one, call it a valve gate. Hot runner gate or hot runner gate. And give it a six there and give it two here. If I give them the same number, it's not able to, I'm not able to control them uh, each at a time. I have to specify a melt entrance point. So, and then it's just putting uh, some mesh on, node seeding, yeah, I don't know. It's just for the example, I can use uh, two. No chance of node seeding. I always check the mesh parameters. I normally run with five boundary layers and an offset ratio between one and two if I have a mesh size as I did here. That's around the wall thickness. I'll generate uh, the mesh. Always start with the only the uh, mesh of the uh, surface mesh of the part, and afterwards uh, I'll just generate the solid mesh, and the lines will be uh, will be meshed as a solid from the properties of the line. So now I have a model for this small training or case. Just have to export the model. Call it one. It asks for the parting lines. Or parting direction, opening direction. Okay, now we have uh, done the mesh. This uh, could of course also be done with a, a imported uh, step file of the runner. But one thing you need is that you have to then uh, split the step file. So you have minimum uh, three parts, two gates and one runner system. Okay. Then uh, I'll try to set up the analysis. I'll double click here. New run. Yes. I'll put in a mesh. We can just use uh, this one. That's like the one I just uh, did. 
put in a material here. Set up the process. New machine limitations. Filling time, we can take one second, doesn't matter. Flow rate profiling and so on, I should not use. Packing time, of course, is important. You can also close the gates in the packing, not only in the filling. Uh, it refers to a packing pressure, not to the filling, end of fill pressure, the packing. Let's say we give it a eight seconds. And 500 bar. Doesn't matter. Now we have to go in. It's the filling packing settings. We have to go in and set the uh, uh, before I go, do this. What I really want is I want to open this and then fill the part until the milk front has passed this gate and then I'll open this gate. To be able to control that, there, there's two ways of doing that. You could either define it by timing and say, okay, when I have, I have chosen a fill time of one second when I'm uh, yeah, 0.4 of a second down the filling, then I'll open that. But a better way, but then I don't know if the front is here or here. A, a better way of doing it is uh, if I use this uh, note picking and say, okay, when the melt front is at this point, I will open the, the gate number two. I just click here and then I have a number over here 85543 and I use I just write this number down in release 16 it's possible just to pick the number but in 15 it's still needed just to write the number of the note down okay now I found out which note it should pass and then it opens the gate to So uh, I go into the, av the advanced settings and <coughs> sorry, here there's two ways of uh, controlling it. There's a uh, timing, as I said, and there's also melt front. The first one we want just control at timing at zero seconds, just the start of the filling we want it to be open. If I should close the first one, which is not normal, uh, I would put in more control points by here, adjusting this. And then I can open, close, I can have a six, for example, and I can open and close the gate as I wish. But in this case, I just need it to be open. The second gate, if you're in doubt which is which, which is which, you can use this Valgate control ID and you can see here. And this one will take melt front. And it's per definition closed when you start when you choose melt front. So you just have to put in the note. When it when the melt front hits this note, it will open. Stands here. It will open the the gate uh, or the yeah the valve valve gate. So when I put in the number of the note eight five five four three, and I hit OK. will not do anything about cooling and let's say finish here. In the computation, 
I'll show a couple of things. You can put in some more um, filling results to be able to follow it, but what I'll do is I'll use this particle tracer. I'll hit this particle tracer and then I'll uh, raise the I'll change this particle tracer will put some particles inside the flow so it's possible to uh, see how how is the uh, from which gates gate are the material filling the part so um, we'll use this part uh, pe particle tr tracing or tracking from gate and we'll release uh, 30 steps. Then it will put some uh, small particles out in the melt and you'll be able to see uh, the flow of, of these particles during the filling. Hit OK. Check run data. Everything is fine. And then it's just running a normal filling and a packing and also a cooling and warp if you also need that. I've cheated a bit, so I have uh, done a simulation up front. It's with the same mesh. I'll go down to the filling results. And now you can see the result. I'll check this one out. The mill front is coming from gate one. And when it hits gate two, or the node that I specified, then it would open. And you can see that the flow front is accelerating here. That's because the pressure from this gate up to here is much bigger than the pressure from here out to this gate. So suddenly this gate will have a much easier uh, by uh, of filling the part. So uh, if we start the simulation or animation, you can see the filling. And you can see the acceleration. It's also possible to see this acceleration. Not this one, this one. If I hit 100 here, reset, you'll be able to see the flow front that it accelerates. One other thing you can do. Is this particle tracer, as I said, I put on, uh, put on. If I hit this uh, gate ID, then it's possible to see which gate, where has the melt come from. And it tells, uh, it, it, then you can see when um, melt is leaving the different uh, gates. Now it starts, uh, gate two, and it fills out. Gate one keeps on filling out, even though gate two is uh, opening. You can also. And in this case, it releases 30 times as I defined from the gate. We'll stop this. One other thing of interest is a, a pressure curve. What's really happening? And then we can see if I go backwards here and see 
when the well gate starts. The pressure drops because the melt has an easier way to flow that way out. And then it just, uh, yeah, just filled apart. One thing that you normally would avoid is too big difference in the velocity because then you get, <coughs> sorry, then you get uh, some uh, visible marks, for example. Uh, and you can avoid that by, for example, be able to controlling the gates or, or the pin moving inside. So you don't have a, you can say suddenly opening of the, the, the pin, but a controlled opening of the pin. Yeah, I think that was the fundamentally things about the uh, valve gates and the way of using them. So uh, if you need uh, more information about some topics, uh, please have a look at uh, the other videos at uh, our home site. And if you're interested in uh, Molex 3D, please contact us.